all of you Good morning. once again. So welcome back. Uh, the new year, everyone's ready to take on what is there for the year ahead. Okay, welcome to all our online students. Nice to see the little thumbnails, even though I can't see your faces. And uh, welcome to all the e-learning students who've joined in fresh for this course or those who've joined us since last uh, semester. Uh, thank you. I hope all of you all are doing well. Okay, so this semester we have a very interesting topic on Christian counseling. Okay. Um, actually, teaching Christian counseling online or through a distance education is something quite difficult because uh, a lot about counseling is all about practice and learning how to do it. So my students over here, I'm going to be uh, using them and making, making them do a lot of role plays in the coming few weeks. So... So that's uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But that doesn't mean all the online students can't participate. You can, because we will use you all as well for this. Because if you're going to learn about counseling, it has to be a hands-on practice, right? It can't be just theory. It's like learning how to cook by reading a recipe book. <laughs> OK, all right. Let's just get started, and uh, we'll dive right in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new year. Thank you for your grace and your faithfulness that has brought us to something brand new, Father. Lord, we look forward to all that you have in store for us. And we pray we will walk in your wisdom. We will walk in your ways. We will walk in your commands. And Lord, we will be in step with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, even as we learn this new topic, even as we just begin to scratch the surface of it, I pray that you would give us a heart um, of love to help and work with others. And may we look at the greatest counselor of all, the Holy Spirit. Be with us and uh, we commit our time ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so through this entire course, I've got PPTs on because uh, uh, we definitely do need examples as we are learning through. So I will be um, putting across a PPT. So I hope those of you who are using your phones are able to uh, check, uh, I mean, look, have, uh, look at the uh, PPT, okay? Just give me a minute. Uh, is this visible to everybody? Yeah? Not visible yet? Yeah. Visible, right? Okay, great. Okay. So, um, maybe the first question that I probably need to ask is, has anyone gone through any kind of a some training or some knowledge about counseling? Anybody, either in the uh, online class or here? Anyone? Uh. Sorry, from? From dad, you learned. OK, all right, dad's a pastor. OK, right. So you must have done, if not counseling, some form of listening, advising. Advising, we all do, no? right the some form of it we would have done right so even as we are going to look into um this entire subject maybe some of the things that we've done uh, is something we should keep aside and look at fresh onto this this sub this subject okay all right so before we get started i i want to bring about um uh, an example to you all, and we'll start off from there. So just give me a minute. Okay, so here's a, here's a, a lady by name Susan, 
who's come to you, okay, and uh, she catches you at the corridor, and she says this to you, okay, and this is what she says. I don't know what's wrong with my husband. He just doesn't allow me enough space to just be me. He always wants to pry into what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. I'm having quite enough. I have second thoughts about this marriage. Okay, so she's sharing this with you. What is the first thing you will tell her? How would you respond to her? Remember, there's no right or wrong answers. If you don't answer or if you don't attempt, you won't learn. Okay, so no right, no wrong. And this is how we're learning. This is a, it's like learning a new language. Okay, all right. So, how would you respond? Even those on the online platform, please, um, please engage either, you know, you could just unmute or um, you can, uh, you can just type it. Yeah. Can, can everyone hear you? First, uh, she can sit with uh, her husband. Uh, no, tell me what you will tell her. I am Susan. Okay. What will you tell me? You can, you can first sit with your husband and you can speak once. And then you can sort it out things. And then you can take decision. Okay, so Anand says, he'll tell me, you must talk, sit with your husband, talk about it, sort it out, and then we'll figure out, we'll, things will be okay. All right, then. <laughs> oh, what should you tell me? I'm Susan. What should you tell me? We can talk about this, we can discuss, or we can pray. So it was a Christian, I can tell, okay, we can hmm. make this make a problem. Okay, okay. Uh, and I think it's really suffering, right? Handling too much. So I said, okay, over. We can handle this more. And uh, there's a way out. Um, and uh, and for that, you need to talk to both of us, like not one person. Then. And we can, there is, we try to convince you. Okay, good, good, Nina. So, so Nina said, um, I'd f uh, she'd first say, um, mm, what's the first thing that you said? Uh, uh, this is it is a it is a hard situation. It, it's true. It's a it's a true situation. It's a hard situation. Nevertheless, we can talk it out. We can figure out something. Get your husband talk about it. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just going to read what someone others have written over here. Uh, Jackin's written, oh, it's a certainly a difficult situation you are in. Okay. Then uh, Nina's written, hold on, don't be in a hurry to make a decision. Okay, Anthony writes, I will tell Susan to be more transparent and open in all her communication so that her husband will be more comfortable to give her space to be herself. Okay, uh, Shivakumar, listen to her in detail the problems, then make her understand wherever attitude change is required, advice with the word of God. Okay, yeah. Francis, what would you say? I won't say anything, but like I should recheck like is her thoughts or is actually really happening. Okay. So, so you'll ask, are you telling the truth or no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll ask, are you telling us the yes, truth? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh Prince. I just make an attempt. It's okay. The first thing I'll say, oh, it must be so hard for you. Mm -hmm. I'll try to empathize. <laughs> Okay. And uh, actually, I asked, like, uh, what's the reason? Like, what's happening? Why it's happening? Okay. And then I'll maybe I'll ask her in detail mm -hmm. for everything, hmm. ask their relationships, how it was. Okay. The so first time only you will ask all this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Good. Dada. <laughs> So I think like I should uh, tell like uh, 
maybe the husband has some past experience which is actually affecting in this relationship so mm. at first like uh, sit and talk with that like the wife should sit with the husband and mm. ask that uh, what is actually like um, affecting him to do all these things mm. Mm. okay so she has made analysis and she said what is the husband <laughs> going through what is happening okay excellent answers excellent answers unfortunately i'm not going to give you the answer right now okay that's something we will discover and learn okay but it is for you to i think for all of us to just know how will we respond and what are some of the responses that we've had yeah please yes can we also ask like like we know like when it comes with marriage and family we have to not only deal with one person but with two of them mm -hmm. so we can also ask like bring your husband we just talk everything open okay all right okay good good i'm, I'm glad that all of you are thinking huh <laughs> good student okay wonderful attempt like i said i'm not going to tell you what it is but um i i'll i'll just show you what are some of the common responses that you'll generally hear okay and uh okay oh i didn't put that slide up okay never mind okay so that's the, some of the common responses are what all of you all said okay but we will look at we need when we're looking at responses we're going to look at what is most effective what is not effective at all what is least effective okay so we will come back to this maybe two three classes later the same example will come to three classes later okay so let's start with understanding what is counseling what are your thoughts what do you think counseling is students you all could also because i have my students here i have i have yeah you can speak all of you can speak yeah so what what do you think counseling is okay radha says counseling is to be able to listen more and to talk less okay okay helping others come out of their situations by actually listening and hearing them out okay uh mm -hmm. not actually controlling them but showing them the way that it helps them better okay nice so what you're saying is it's not when you say controlling i think what you mean is not telling them what to do yeah. but being able to show them a path going forward okay good anand okay 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 wonderful you bought an excellent aspect of it counseling is not just about what you do it is like he said it's a relationship with somebody right just like how you go meet with a doctor you have a doctor and a patient relationship you know that a lot of people feel so much better when they go meet with a doctor who's able to listen to them isn't it right so similarly even in counseling the relationship with the counselor is very very vital for a Uh, in a counseling thing okay good good um okay the students online students what are your thoughts uh jackin says counseling is listening to others and helping them or guiding them to take a decision of their own conviction wonderful nice nice okay i like some some of the words that she's used is um it's listening helping them guiding them to take a decision of their own choice or conviction not yours okay not you as a counselor okay uh, solomon writes uh, counseling is giving sound biblical advice to the person okay all right so let me take you to the next slide and kind of share with you um you know what let's first look at what counseling is not okay so let's understand what counseling is not so number 1 it's not giving advice and it's not giving answers to people's problems okay we're not working in a prophetic ministry here <laughs> remember that okay it's not a prophetic ministry it's a counseling ministry so it's not when someone comes to you and says like you know 
these babas who sit there and say, come, I'll tell you what the issue is. So counseling is not giving answers to people's problems, neither is it giving advice, OK? Counseling is not being judgmental. The meaning of judgmental is people are going to come with you with come to you with many kind of issues, um, which um, maybe as believers or as as someone who has a Christian conviction, uh, they definitely there's a, there's a lot of sin that you are going to be exposed to when someone's going to come, right? And it's not being judgmental and um, you know calling them a sinner and calling them pagans and you know unloved of god or of satan it that's not what counseling is okay it's not giving any labels to them it's not being judgmental next one it's not attempting to sort out the problems of the counselee or the client okay you're you're not sitting there knowing the answers to everything so you're not there to uh, you, you're not held responsible to sort out people's problems, okay? Next one. It's not expecting or encouraging a counselee to behave in a way in which the counsellor may have behaved when confronted with a similar situation. Maybe you went through something similar and you, uh, you did something else that worked for you, right? Or, you know, you followed what scripture said and it worked for you. It is not encouraging them to behave in the same way. That's not what it is. It's not modeling a behavior to someone. That's not, again, what counseling is. Okay? It's not getting emotionally involved with the person. What does that mean? Now, yeah, so they're coming and crying to you because of the problems. You sit and cry alongside with them. That's not, that's not it. Okay? You're, you're there to help them with those emotions and not get as involved with it. So getting involved with them would be going way overboard than what you're expected to do. OK? To another person in the counseling session? Like if we get uh, emotionally involved with the client, huh. may it affect the It can affect your your counseling with the personal agenda with a personal yeah. correct Supporting them yeah sort of. yeah that's what happens so when you're emotionally involved you tend to it is out of your interest this uh, deep interest that you want to help them so you may go beyond what is the boundary of counseling all right so that's 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 about what emotionally involvement is and is um, counseling is not looking at a counselee's problems from your own perspective or based on your own value system all right which means that uh, especially when especially when you're um, uh, dealing with uh, non believers right they may not hold your own conviction or your own value system so you're not you are, uh, as you're dealing with them, you're independently working alongside with them. However, keeping your convictions in heart, keeping your convictions in your mind. Okay. Uh, any thoughts? Any questions here from the online students, or any any anything before I move on? Okay. Um, the next we so let's let's look at what counseling is. All right. So what is counseling? The first thing that we uh, we need to understand is that counseling is um, a way, okay? It is uh, a relationship that gives you a framework uh, to have a purposeful conversation. So counseling is all about having a meaningful conversation. It's a conversation. Okay, it's not a question and answer session where the counselee asks you a question, you give them an answer. Asks you a question, give them an answer. It's not it. While you are talking with them, you're helping them do three things. You're helping them explore. You're helping them understand their problem. And you're helping them get into action. Okay, and we're going to learn about the framework of counselling, which is this. It's called 
exp EUA, exploration, understanding, and getting into action. So the conversation is where you help them to explore their problem, why they are feeling this way, what they think is the issue, help them understand it, and help them bring about change. OK, so it's all through a conversation that happens. And that's why counseling has many skills that we need to develop in order to get them through this process. Action, getting into action. OK, next, counseling is in the, um, uh, uh, in the midst of a supportive relationship. A relationship between the counselor as well as the counseling. Okay, it is in the midst of a supportive relationship. And what does that help to do? It helps them to, it helps the counselee first and foremost to focus on their feelings. Now, when you have a problem, right, think of any problem you have. How is the first, what is the first indication that you have a problem? How do you know you're having a problem? Ah, so what you get, you feel emotional about it. Either you're angry or sad or you're uh, uh, jealous or whatever, right? Your emotional experience is what really tells you that there is a problem. So God has put emotions inside of us like a thermometer. It's like a, where it, it will tell you whether something is wrong or not, right? So through that relationship with the counselee, what you're doing is focusing first on their emotions or on their feelings. Then you focus on their behavior or their experiences in such a way with a goal to bring about some change. So they have a problem. They come to you with a problem. You're exploring their feelings and experiences, helping them understand it so that they can bring about some change. And this is done through that supportive relationship between a counselor and a counselee. OK? All right? The next one, it is, it is a relationship of trust. A counselor counselee relationship has to be built on trust. Why trust? Because then only will they open up. Correct. If you don't open up, it's like you're going to the doctor with a headache, but actually you have a backache and you're not telling them the truth of it. What are they going to help you with? Nothing, right? So similarly, remember I said this is not prophetic ministry for the counselor to understand, oh, okay, she has a back pain also. No, it's not, right? So it, it is, uh, and that trust gets built when the counselor uh, exhibits that kind of a gesture or that kind of a um, um, demeanor or a behavior, right? So for example, um, for the, the counselee should know or should feel the need to bring out whatever is deep within so that the counselor can help them move from a place of problem to a place of action or a place of solution. Okay, So it is built on a relationship of trust. So the, the more than anything else, actually even more than skills, if you're able to connect to people in in a uh, in the umbrella of trust you know a lot of things can actually happen all right so three main things is it's a conversation it's a supportive relationship and it's something that's a relationship of trust okay all right any questions any thoughts till here if not i'd like to move on okay so we're just going to um before we get into understanding counseling as a um, what do you say as a subject or thing I, we're also going to be looking at our role as counselors or as biblical counselors we need to know what our standing is what are some of the core elements that we need to um, keep in mind so we're going to look at the core elements of biblical counseling okay okay so the first one um uh the the first thing that we um, when we look at too many tabs okay the first element of biblical counseling is 
we we keep in mind and we stand on the principle that god is at the center of every biblical counseling okay god is in the center of biblical counseling okay and um, i just want to bring about a scripture for you just a minute okay so um, when we look at god and we're looking at his word as you see in 2 timothy verse 3 verse 17 could one of you just read that out please 2 timothy 3 verse 17 You can read 15 to 17. Three verses 15, chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. Second Timothy, chapter 3, from verse 15. And how from infants you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation, through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay. So when you look at um, at these verses, we uh, what are being what is being emphasized is the power of God and his word in everything in life. And that also involves anything to do with problems and people's issues. Okay, So it says, you have been taught the scriptures from childhood. What has it given us? It has given us wisdom to receive salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Okay, We see that scripture is inspired by God, and it is useful for teaching, for admonishing, for correcting. Right? It corrects us, it teaches us. So when we're looking at biblical counseling, that becomes foundational. God and his word becomes foundational to everything that we are doing. And uh, verse 17, it says, God uses it to prepare and equip his people for every good work. Right. So even as counselors, that becomes the base for all our help and our support. All right. Okay. Next principle is um, all disciplines are under the authority of the scripture. Now, whatever. So, so something like counseling, um, uh, uh, you know, is is something that that also did come from other disciplines, other disciplines of science like life sciences, sociology, um, anthropology. All of them. You know, it, it's been picked up from the, this kind of a subject has been, has come as a result of of other wider topics and wider subjects. So, whatever disciplines, whether you're learning from psychology, you're learning from sociology, all these disciplines are under the authority of the scripture. Okay, and, and that's what it, it has to pass the test of it being through scripture. Okay, next one, um, sin is the primary concern that needs to be dealt with. So what, what do we mean by this is that whatever um, uh, the primary problem of mankind is what? Is sin in every one of its dimensions. So even when people are coming with problems, it's because of our sin nature that we are in a situation as we are. Okay, so sin is something that, uh, as a counselor, we must deal with. And it is also essential to understand why people have problems. Knowing that sin exists in all its dimensions here, that helps us understand problems of people and how we need to minister to them. Okay, So sin is the primary concern that needs to be dealt with. Now, that doesn't mean... When people are coming to you, you're saying, okay, you're very sinful. You're a sinner. That doesn't mean that. But we need a perspective or an understanding. You know, you have a um, you have a working knowledge in saying, okay, why is this person coming here with this issue? It's because of sin. That is, or when you look back into our lives, why am I feeling angry at 
my friend or my husband. It's because of my sinful nature, right? So we we need to understand that as the uh, as as one of the principles. Next one. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer. Okay, so the gospel is the life of of God in our souls, and it is fundamental for any kind of reconciliation. Right. So, um, and and we we see of uh, so many truths in Scripture talking about repentance, about forgiveness, justification. Um, and this is the need of every person, whether they believe it or not, this is the need of every person, right? And so when we are ministering to them, we are ministering with that hope that they will receive the Lord one day. Now, again, that doesn't mean everyone who we counsel, we may uh, bring about the gospel. It it, it it really depends on the working of the Holy Spirit through that point of time, okay? The next one is the process of change, sorry, should always aim at progressive sanctification. The change process must um, always aim at progressive sanctification. Now, what does that mean? That ultimately, Every person needs to conform to um, to Christ, to Jesus Christ, right? Uh, and and that is that that and it may be a progressive. It ca it can be something that happens slowly, progressively, right? Uh, and it is um, when when we look at um, uh, maybe I think I'll I'll share the next slide with you and then that'll be easy okay so to understand that there are two kinds there is an instantaneous justification that happens and a progressive sanctification that happens so what is the instantaneous justification that happens so immediately what is the definition of justification that immediately when you believe in god or when you trust in him you are justified as if you did not sin it is an instantaneous immediate one that happens when a person comes to the saving knowledge of jesus christ okay and uh, and this is the two aspects of this is forgiveness of sins on the basis of what jesus did for us on the cross and secondly it is when we when we are into his, uh, in jesus we become adopted as his children the minute we believe Okay, that's an instantaneous one. That's called justification. Nevertheless, what, what happens is your sanctification is a process, right? So when you have come to a place of belief, you may not immediately, your body and your soul may not immediately bring about a change. Okay, so for example, a person who's been smoking for 25 years, um, there are some people who have instantaneous uh, um, healing, but for others, for some, it may be something that's progressive. They, they, they are. They, it is a gradual one. They, they live with um, God. They with His Word, with His power. There is a slow change that happens. Okay, so it is a continuous operation of the Holy Spirit, right? the holy spirit continuously continuously works in us to purify us to renew us to make us in the image of god okay so that's what we call as a progressive sanctification and the two aspects to sanctification sanctification is that we are set apart from set apart from sin so that we are set apart to god all right, and that's the process that happens. Okay, so uh, there is there is that um, uh, uh, counseling change must aim at that progressive sanctification, which means it may take time. It will be progressive. It will be gradual, but it is moving them from that place of sin to a place of transformation, which may be progressive, which may be gradual. Okay, all right. Uh, any thoughts? Any questions? Uh, Ma'am, like 
when uh, when we do counseling uh, especially when uh, we keep our counseling based on uh, biblical standards and uh, not everybody were uh, willing to uh, apply law or uh, deal through biblical standards right so then with that kind of person how we can like actually uh, like how we can tell them or how to take a step those mm -hmm. kind of so yeah, we will be talking a lot about this um but in short um again we're not like we said we're not telling people what to do we are helping them to think about um, about maybe their their lives or their problems like let's take an example maybe you have um let's say uh, a young lady who comes to you who's living in maybe some form of um sin or some form of a wrong behavior right she's come to you the very fact that she's come to you what does it indicate she needs help right so that itself is a good thing right now in your conversation alongside with her she may say you know i'm what i'm feeling really upset because of these 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 things i want to get rid of it but i'm not able to right so that in itself shows a sin conscious mind right okay and that's how you begin conversations you begin conversations to okay what what bothers you about this kind of a lifestyle so she may say certain things of it right and through that conversation through questioning is how you get them to a place to think and understand and realize if they uh, you know if if there is something that can completely save them so some part of counseling where we call as a disclosure is where we can disclose the gospel you know you can disclose the gospel but that's not right in the beginning that is after a point of time that you have brought them to think about a place that there is no place of saving other than god above so you have to bring them to that point right and that happens through your questions through your conversations right through what they say helping them understand okay like i'll give you um, maybe an example of of one of the cases that i did she was talking about how her identity was all in her work okay and she lost her job she lost her job so much so that something happened and she got a very poor rating and she couldn't get another job because her rating was so poor and uh, she came for counseling because she just realized that she had she felt she lost everything by uh, not because she lost a job but because her identity her or who she was was very stuck to that job right and when that went it came as a shock to her because she never thought it would it would ever happen that way right so the questions kind of came to that place i mean you know when 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 we were talking it came she began to understand how all her life she had um um she had attached her self worth to success or self worth to performance self worth to something that she was getting out from her job so the minute that was taken from her her self worth left right so then they come to that realization and then they ask you the question you know what if 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 my job can um, can be taken away from me there are so many other things that can be taken away and that's when she realized okay my health will fail my family once will pass away or my friends may not be there which means what do i hold my identity to and that's where you know when she comes to that place is how you can disclose maybe a personal journey and saying you know this is what where i've saw my identity or you could say something at more general reference of there are uh, people who look towards towards god right maybe initially you'll put it very general and then you know through that conversation bring 
uh, have them have a conversation about that. So all you can do is only present it. You can't make them believe or uh, uh, you know live a certain way. You bring them to that point. It's like taking the horse to the water. The horse only has to drink the water, right? Similarly, you bring them to a point where they've come to a place of realization that you know none of this is helpful. None of this this is useful. Okay. Okay. You'll you'll figure out more of this. All right. Okay. Next is uh, we look at what are some of the basic principles of effective counseling. So um, uh, one of the main ministry that we rely on is the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a counselor and 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 as a comforter. Why? Why do you think so? He is the greatest counselor, right? So uh, the ministry, the Holy Spirit's ministry as the counselor is critical in Christian counseling. Okay, So when you're sitting in a room, there are three people involved in a counseling situation. Who are they? The Holy Spirit, counselor, Yeah. OK. So whenever you're counseling, you have one eye here and one eye there, right? And that's the dependence on the work of the spirit is very, very crucial. Okay, so we need to be aware as a counselor, as a Christian counselor, we need to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and also how we need to function like a spirit filled counselor in what we say. Um, in the in the gifts that we use now that doesn't mean now all because I said you know it's not a prophetic ministry that doesn't mean uh, you 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 cannot bring about a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge right and you don't have to be spooky and say the Lord above told me this is what is happening. you don't have to say that right but you can say something like I sense something like that is that true right and that's perfectly okay to, to bring about that so um, the Holy Spirit is uh, is a, a very very vital uh, person in counseling okay next one I, I think we spoke about that the bible is the sole and sufficient authority in counseling and dealing with all problems of living so we know that the uh, that scripture uh, gives us every wisdom that we need to deal with people and their problems as we read in 2 corinthians uh, sorry uh, second timothy 3 verse 17 okay the next one is prayer. It is a very important part of biblical helping. Um, to use prayer, um, uh, even, even actually through, even in counseling, you know. Um, uh, in here at Chrysalis, after every session, we actually tell them, uh, because, because we, we, we are a known Christian counseling center, uh, and they come to our center, they, we get them to sign a form, that we do pray at the end of it in the form it's there we will pray uh, you know please um, if you're not comfortable something that it talks about so to be asked can we pray for you but we we do know that prayer is an important part of um, counseling so but the the proper timing is very very important right it's very important next is um, the ultimate goal of counseling is to make disciples is to make disciples of the lord jesus christ um that is that is what we desire if if um even if uh, you know even if they do not accept christ there is some seed that goes in right maybe some principles or some the life of how christ is through us there is a seed that needs to go in. It is to make those disciples. And lastly, the personal qualities of the counselor needs to be spiritual, not just academic. It's not only about how you can counsel or uh, the knowledge that you possess and the techniques or the skills that you use, but you need to be spiritually mature to be effective, to also have a knowledge of God's word and wisdom in how it can be applied in practical different ways. So those are some of the basic principles that are, I think that is, that is, that is more, there's more in the next slide. 
Okay. Um, okay. Do you have any questions? We'll come this through next. I won't finish it. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Like when we are seeing this basic principle, so uh, for point three, praying, prayer is an integral part. Hmm. Uh, Ma'am, at the ending, you told like uh, we it is an integral part, but timing is important. You hmm. mentioned. So is it like there is like certain time or like every day? Like my question is like you have also mentioned like. Every end of the counseling uh, will be pray, pray. Uh. but also you have mentioned like timing. Yeah, is, I'll tell you. Not like we can't. I'll tell you what it, I'll tell you what it means. Now, now the, your client is saying something to you, okay, and you don't know what to say. It's okay. Come, let's pray. <laughs> okay, that's what I meant by timing. Okay, in the sense of, and I think a lot of us do that when we don't know what to do, which is true, which is right. When you don't know what to do, it's like God, we don't know what to do. Let's pray. But maybe when if you if you don't have a person who's who knows anything about prayer, they think something's wrong with your head, right? When you and they're saying, you know, my husband's going to kill me. So say, okay, come, let's pray together. <laughs> they'll they'll all know what's wrong. So th there are certain. That's what I meant by timing. Like at a point of time, they're crying or you know they really want your support. That's what they're looking for you. But at that point of time, if you've gone into prayer, it does. It's not an effective. Time. That's that's basically what it means. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? Uh, uh, the fourth point in this ultimate goal of counseling is to make disciples. Mm. So we'll just imagine a non-believer or a gentile came to us. They they were just going through a very hard situation. How come? How come is this goal correct? Like. To make disciple. So yeah, so I did say that it may not be something that you will achieve uh, with everyone you meet. That is, they become disciples of of Jesus, right? But for those who are within, like if you are, uh, um, especially counseling someone who is a believer, that is the goal: to make them more like Christ, right? For those who aren't believers, the goal is to at least get them to hear about him but there is an finally there is an ultimate goal for everyone for any one of our ministry whatever we're doing even if i'm just going to walk out and talk to others the goal is one that they will know christ and once they know christ they will be his disciples right so this is this is a lot more um focused on those who may be believers to ensure that they they are disciples of christ through whatever situation or problem they may come in. Okay? All right? Okay. We'll close for a 10-minute break, and we'll come back at 11 o'clock. <laughs>